kingdom living. He is the kingdom living. Say it again. He is the kingdom living. skip over some of the things, but I'm gonna, uh, I'll park where I feel like I need to park, but I'm going to talk certain things through. One of the keys to kingdom living is what we pro I refer to as forgiveness. It's called in, in, in my book, the bridge to eternity. And when you can't, you destroy the bridge that crossed you over into eternity. It's, 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 it's one of the keys. It's a primary key. Now, let me, let me talk about forgiveness one and then before I go to the notes. I always teach and say that forgiveness is one of the great secrets How do I call it? Uh, I think in the message it's called God's Secrets or God's Secrets Made Known. And one of the these secrets, and it's, it's, it's what is known for longer secret it, it was, is that God forgave you before he made you. You were forgiven so that what happened in creation did not solicit a response from God because he already had laid out the plan of salvation to rescue you from your decisions. Now, you didn't have to make that because you have free will. But God, salvation is not an afterthought and a response where God is reacting to something because then that would, you know, affect some of these doctrinal attributes that God cannot be causally affected by anything external to himself. Mm. Meaning you ain't gonna get God like, oh, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So if he's all knowing, he had to know. So your sin was not a secret that caught God or an issue or a mistake that God had to then come up with a response. It's all premeditated and all, it's all, and, and here goes back, let me say this, let's go this, I got to say this right here, where, where in, in our ancient teachings, everything then is balanced, light, darkness, we we'll call good and evil, Balance, and I'm not saying that it's all good, but it's still balanced. Come on. So darkness is just part of the that which balances creation, because life would not be able to be sustained if it was all sunshine. Darkness is a necessary something in order to allow things a time to go to sleep, to rejuvenate, to recover. So that when the sun comes back up, it is able to rise up again. So it's a necessary balance. And I'm saying that saying that sin was necessary, but it is part of the balance of all life in creation. And at the end of the day, no matter what happens, you still reach your goal. If you were designed and created for heaven, then you you'll you, you'll reach your goal no matter what. Now, truth in man is you're not designed and created for heaven. You're designed and created for earth. Oh. Heaven is just where you go for a momentary until yeah. God makes all yes. things new. Yes. Revelation. Yes. I saw a new heaven and a new earth and da 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 da. The old one was passed away and then we all be brought back to earth to live our life. The scripture says the heavens belong to God, but the earth is given to man. So at the end of this whole thing, so you're going to still be right back in the earth. Right now. He just gonna purify you and purify it. <laughs> That's why I stopped preaching about heaven so much. We, at the end of this thing, we're gonna be back here. <laughs> this is your home. You created for here. You rule here. So, let's start off. 
that's just the most the hardest words I said. I, I teach this for so so forgiveness is is a key, and 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 part of that is is you walking. Well, I teach so much about self confidence and you know all of those things, uh, and I'm not saying that words and things that don't hurt, but I do know that the more secure you are, come on. Yeah. You're more quicker and likely to move on. Yeah. And I, that words can sting and all that, but you can move on. Right. Uh, that insecurity is, is, is something. It's, it's, my goodness. And so, uh, if, if, if they hurt worse, words will hurt worse. Uh, insecure and sting up it is. But, but at the end of the day, you know, it's yeah. your confidence and security, you can, you can move on. Yeah. Oh, so so uh, forgiveness is called the bridge, the bridge to eternity. Uh, and this is what uh, George Herbert, 1593 to 1633, an English clergyman and poet, he says, he that cannot forgive others break the bridge over which he himself must cross if he would ever reach heaven. You destroy the bridge, it gets you there. Uh, Hannah Moore, forgiveness saved the expense of anger. The cost of hatred is a wasted spirit. It ain't even worth it. So, we we'll move quickly on these things in uh, scripture. So, it talks about but first of all, forgiveness and the new birth. To walk in love is also to walk in forgiveness. Because to live or operate in unforgiveness is to operate outside of the new birth. Outside of the new nature that we receive in Christ. It is to operate in the old nature in an unregenerate spirit. And there are scriptures that go with that, so I won't give you all of those today. Um, God himself is ready to pardon us from all and to be gracious and to be merciful. The word says in Nehemiah as well as in Psalm that God is slow to anger, but abundant, abundant in mercy and, and, mercy, and, and, and forgiveness is all of that. I think it's Psalms uh, 119 that uh, he knows our frame and remembers that we are dust. Frame here is, is your reference, how you think, what happened to you, what, what, what went into the makeup of how you think. Frames actually for mind. He knows our mentality, our mindset, how we got to where we are mentally, what, what factored into us thinking a certain way. And that's something. God knows your thought pattern and why you think the way you do and feel like you. He takes into account all that has happened to you, education and everything else. And so he looks at you, he factors in everything about you. And then he remembers that you are dust. Great. That there's a law in your members warring against the law of your mind or your spirit that there, there is now a struggle that's pulling at you that you have to constantly pray to overcome he knows that that you know it's easy to, to, to walk in forgiveness because people have no right to do certain things to you hallelujah thank you Lord God and so he'll even be merciful enough to allow you to vent your frustration, your anger, to live it out, to walk it out, and then and then act like it didn't ever happen. Because he operates in forgiveness, and that makes sense. In other, let me bring it all the way home. In other words, your mess is not affecting how God feels about you. Your mess of it, 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 it don't change his mind. God is like saying they didn't mean that. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. They're just speaking out of hurt. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus was right on the cross that forgive them. They, they don't they don't know what they do. If they understood the power of what they were going to do, they wouldn't even do it. So don't hold this to 
Yeah. You know, and that, that's, that's a deep revelation that what, what he actually is saying is, don't lay this as, as uh, on their resume. When they come up in the church, knock this out like a man. That's forgiveness right there. You know, when God brings you into place and before judgment, Jesus saying, I don't even want it on their resume. It's something that happened. Blot it all the way out like it never existed. Yes, Lord. See, that's the key to kingdom living. You got to be able to walk to, to where uh, you can't let things and people affect your goal and affect you in a way that it throws you off your path, off your trail. You got to tell somebody to stay focused. Stay focused. Say it again. Say stay focused. Tell them to stay focused. And any man's sure to have it. I think there's a song, it's, it was a word in the song. I bring it up. Uh, there's a line in, that's in there. It's, he says, uh, um, this is a, a, a quote here from a song. The goal of the enemy is to keep you from knowing who you are. Come out! Come out! That's it! So a lot of times people can sense and see the greatness in you and do stuff to trip you up and keep you from focusing on your goal because they know you got what it takes. Oh, say that to somebody. You can tell them, tell them you got what it takes. You got what it takes. Take, take, take. Go on, get a yeah. money preacher and say, I can help you if you let me. I can help you. Come on. Yeah. By the Lord, God. Right. Thank you, Lord, God. Lift your hand and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, one thing is. Bridge, the key to kingdom living is about the power of forgiveness. And the first one is forgiveness in the new birth. Uh, you can't operate in the new nature if you walk in, in the old and sit right there. This is what C.S. Lewis says Christianity has no relevance to people who do not think or, or feel the need to forgive. Mm -hmm. Christianity has no relevance to any per people, person or people mm. who don't think or feel the need to forgive mm. and be forgiven. So, first one, forgiveness in the new birth. Number two, unforgiveness and the unpardonable. Uh, if you do not forgive, Jesus teaches this thing. In essence, this is an unpardonable sin. Mm -hmm. He says it this way, if you don't, neither with your father in heaven, mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. So that becomes an unpardonable sin. Mm -hmm. So forgiveness. Uh, what was that, that movie, uh, Diary of a Man, Black like Woman, Sister, yeah. as he said to her daughter, the forgiveness is for you, baby. Yeah. 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 Because you're going to, if you, Hold on to this, you're gonna destroy yourself. Don't yeah. right. right. like him. This, this is for you. You need this in order to be free and to walk in health and wholeness and healness, uh, uh, healing. You you need to be able to do it. It's for you. So. Uh, this is William Barclay. The law of prayer concerning bitter people. Your bitterness is a wall through which your prayers cannot penetrate. <laughs> I'm quoting from others. This is the law of prayer concerning bitterness. Bitter, your bitterness is a wall through which your prayers cannot penetrate. So if you bitter you create a wall that your prayers can't get through. It can't get it. Can't it. You gotta let it go. Amen. Amen. And, and, and we'll go from there. So, so um, General Ogathorpe is way back. British general was talking to another American um, who was talking to George Wesley. And he said, you know, concerning helping them to aid in one of the um, uh, victories of the battle, he said, this is General Ogathorpe, I never forgive. 
This is recorded in, in uh, Wesley's writing and stuff. And so it is said, Wesley replied, replied to him, then I hope, sir, you never sin. Because if you don't never forgive, then, then I hope you never sin. Because if you're going to make it into glory, you're going to need God to forgive your sin. Boy, I tell you. So, so, uh, and, and then of course it said, unforgiven, is Satan gaining an advantage over you? Taking advantage over you. And so, if you're gaining an advantage over you. Uh, number three, uh, about all of these are quick key, keys to keep them living, is, and I'm not through this, is this one section, I'm going to do, do it like two different messages. Uh, see oh, yeah, okay. one. True forgiveness, true forgiveness. Uh, English poet Alexander Pope, to err is human, to forgive is divine. You can leave with that. Forgiveness is the nature of God, the song in which the grace of God emerges. The love of God expressed human character best through a forgiving spirit. Uh, and it gives into the story of how Esau dealt with his brother, which we talked some time back. After so many years of Jacob running, um, when he finally met Esau, he was still living under his own guilty conscience. And spending his life running till he couldn't run no more. And when he finally met his brother Esau, Esau embraced him, yeah. threw his arms around him, and like, brother, where you been? Mm -hmm. He couldn't tell him I've been running from you. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought you were going to try to kill me. Yeah. I was in that anger and would have if I could have. Mm -hmm. But that was so long ago. Mm -hmm. I'm long past that. Yeah. Now, can I talk a little bit right here? Come on, Dad. Come on. Brother. This is why you should develop a mindset to go on and build the best and greatest life that you can. Yes, sir. And I got to talk now. We're going to get. And don't make decisions on what, what I refer to as a get back spirit. Because you are now allowing people to control your decision. I'm going to do this to show you. No, I ain't doing this to show nothing to nobody. I have my own goals. I have goals. I have dreams that I'm going to reach. It ain't even about you. It's the goals I'm trying to reach. And here's what Esau teaches. When you reach those goals, your life and your, your happiness and, is based upon you're accomplishing the task with the help of God. You are consumed by the joy of walking and living in victory because of that. That, 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 makes, that makes sense. That overshadows everything else. So the higher you go up, the further you get away from stuff. But if you stay low, this stuff still affects you. Now, now I, I, I'm a, this is going to really hurt you. Know, but, but this is why when you become successful, I got no problem in moving out of the ghetto. I got to get away from the stuff that hurts me and causes me pain. I don't call you to cause you pain. I'm okay. You know. But we ain't going to knock on those who feel the need to go higher, go to the mountain or go wherever. Give me a couple of million dollars, I'm going to the mountain too. <laughs> Bless everybody and help them to try to get there if they want to go. Thank you. Thank you. Going to the mountain too. Yeah. Amen. Where Pastor? Oh, he, 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 he in Africa somewhere. He's here. He, gonna, he, he said he's going to video your ear. How y'all doing? Y'all got a preacher today? You know I wasn't going to be there. Amen. Amen. But, 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 but it, is, it is true. It is true. It is, we're talking now. This is like a Bible study that. Come on. The more you succeed and reach your goals, the less stuff 
hurt you of what people did. It hurts you more when you don't get to your goal. It's like people even tell the truth. So, so, you know, stay focused. And, and don't tear down the bridge. Operate in the spirit of love because it, it's, 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 it's for you. It's, it's, it's necessary. Thank you. Now, here's the next thing I need to close up on this part here. Already. What you need to do is don't repay evil for evil. Don't repay evil for evil. Keep on moving. Now, listen, I'm not going to let you hurt me. But I'm not going to make my life about trying to get back. Repay evil for evil. I'm just going to make sure that you can't do that again. And how do I do that by succeeding? You su success is going to be the answer to all this. That's, we're talking about living higher, kingdom living, living higher. So success will distance you from people. It allows you to live where you want to live and drive what you want to drive and go where you want to go. And be who you want to be, black child. So don't spend your life, don't repay. Move on. Now, what are we talking about? This is for me. This ain't for y'all. If I can't get to where I'm going right now, and you hurt me, then I'm going to help bring you to your senses for me. Amen. I'm going to turn the other cheek after I did. You hear me? Pow! And I'm gonna say now you'll think about that the next time. That's valid. I'm trying to help deliver you. And then I'm going about my business. Because I'm not gonna get this straight. That's that for me now, y'all. You know what? Yeah, no, I know they're gonna get it. But Tom they be like, what is a violent preacher right there? They have no idea. Uh, amen. Amen. But, but you know, now let me tell y'all this, this some of y'all don't know, but we, if we were taught, you don't start a fight. That's right. But you finish it. Amen. finish it. Amen. But listen, listen. Don't, don't, don't make your life repay you. Evil. For evil. And then here's when we close on this, this lecture, that forgiveness is the true nature of God. I'm trying to see where that. And of course, they give you all the scriptures where Jesus prayed the same thing, uh, the gift and so forth and so on. So, so a key to kingdom, this is one of the lessons that I've been taught in the series uh, about kingdom living was this whole thing of forgiveness because, and I did this part first because that's what frees you that's right. to go on that's right. to be the best that you can that's be. Right. So that you don't you don't carry nothing in you that's that right. affects your decisions in your life. It clears you. It that's clears right. your conscience. And then you can, I'm gonna say this and I'll, I'll move to my next section. Then you are able to enjoy things, life and all. Much better yeah. when your conscience is clear yeah. and you're free. Does that make sense? Yes, yes sir. The Lord, thank you, right? Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, uh, don't harbor anything because that will affect you and your decisions and it will rob you of your, your happiness. Thank you, Lord. Inside and, and uh, in Solomon says the best that happiness is, is like a joy and all of those things. Mm -hmm. Laughter is medicine to your soul. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's medicine, it's healing yeah. when, when you can laugh. Yeah. Uh, it's, so you need the ability to laugh. Uh, I think uh, uh, when you don't have laughter, I, I think it's uh, the best talk years ago. Um, uh, I didn't use the word depression. 
it was where it was now. But in essence, it's coming at is the soul's greatest disease. Mm -hmm. When you, if you're bitter, bitter. you know, there's enough forgiveness in us. It's a disease that eats at your own job. It eats at your own. It's, it's, it's the soul's greatest disease. When you can't laugh. It's a cancer to the soul when you can't enjoy life. And so do you know in, in, the, in Proverbs it says that so your ability to laugh and enjoy life is a gift from God. That's right. That's right. Yes. That's true. That's a gift from God. The ability to laugh and enjoy life. That's a gift from God. So he, he says that. So nothing better for man, eat, drink, be merry. For this is God's gift. And the enemy, whoever that may be, that way, job is to rob you of this job. Yes. Yes, of everything. So, so you have to protect your ability to walk in healing. And in laughter and in joy, got to protect it because that's that's really sacred. You can't laugh and enjoy. You lose that money can't even. That's right. And money can't buy me love or things of that sort. Money can't even do it. I saw this this uh, a clip from this movie uh, about. Uh, Huge, you know, as rich as he was, and was in misery, locked in a room, because right. somewhere lost something. I know it's been a disease too, a um, mental illness and whatnot. But you know, God, so so that things and money came by, and, and everything. So be 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 aware, be aware that. Okay, he, he, here's the other part of this that I want keys to keep the. the and, and this is the section where I switched it, uh, part two, for that. And this is going to help explain, maybe a little bit more. I put in here, number two, the revelation of Jesus. The revelation of Jesus. That's a two. What is that? You know, when y'all think of Jesus, think about it. Lord had all of that stuff. Oh, no. Y'all no, don't think of that, but you know. Not, not it, but the revelation of Jesus is, is the, I believe deeply in this messianic hope and entrance, which tells how God miraculously entered into humankind, which is called the incarnation. Or, or God's way of invading his creation in a tangible way and put God in touch with his creation. See, I think about it a little bit. I don't talk a lot about my thinking, but today you get to get into it. My thinking. I'm always. So it, it, it destroys this, the, 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 this doctrine of deism which is that God made creation but have no contact with them. That's these. It means he made it in such a way that it runs on its own. He makes no contact, which means that there is no incarnation because God has no contact with his creation. And then there's some teaching that God is so God that we cannot uh, make contact uh, or so much of us on. Now, I do believe that there is an undercurrent universal law, spiritual law, natural law, which things are designed to operate. And that God is set in motion, like we say the law of motion. God set things in motion. I believe in it. Yes, sir. So, so there's a law of motion through which our earth is spinning on. That's, that's, so let's not get so far over that we defy, you know, things here. That's when we get in trouble. because we, we, we put everything so much on God that we can't explain stuff that now we can explain. There is, you know, this cycle of natural law and all working through which things are 
working on a cycle and that God has done. But, 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 what we call incarnation and messiahship is that this great God also can enter into it without losing his godness. Not to destroy natural law, but he can, he can work within it. Like, like, like you. He gets in you. Come on. Not to destroy you. And he can, that's a, that's a, 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 a doctrine that, uh, it's not a doctrine, it's, it's, a, it's a topic more or less. Help along with this. One day I would probably wouldn't be able to remember what it is. It has something to do with permissibility or something I can't remember what it is right now. Permissibility. Oh, but, but I can explain it to you. I can't remember the term. But uh, the permissibility of, of God. What it means, and let me give you this example. Sure, the greatness of this thing. Okay, let's say you have in this room a pool of water in a container. And you can put this water in that container. See, that's you. Based upon the temperature of the atmosphere, mm. it will remain in a liquid state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you adjust the temperature, mm -hmm. bring it up, mm -hmm. heat changes mm -hmm. the complexity of this water mm -hmm. where it begins to evaporate. It's still water yes, right. in another state yes. of existence. He had not destroyed it. Okay. It's still water, but it's evaporating. Mm -hmm. And then you can take a, 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 another object, like a pipe or something on the wall that's kind of cold, or something that's cold, it will attract that. And this water, evaporated water, can move through the atmosphere yeah. Yeah. without you seeing it. Yeah. All collected. It condensed on the pipe, and then start to roll down. And if you put a pipe right there, it'll drop. So by the changing of the temperature, God can move water by changing its state across the room, re, you know, put it back together, change the temperature again, and it condense down to, so he just moved the water without destroying the water. That's what God does to us every day. Moves up from a low state, and nobody can see it. And there's a change going on in you. Without destroying you, you change the complexity 